All right, we're here. We are here in the studio. Thomas, give me a wave. Thomas is getting our secondary set up. So we've got a little bit of special battle report. I bust, busted my hump. I will give myself credit for this. I know all the guys will too, but uh, Thomas had the perfect amount of GW terrain in boxes ready to go for us. Uh, so I picked it all up. I built it all. We are mimicking the, the US Open terrain set up here. We've got the acrylic bases. They work really nice. Uh, you can see the mats through. You can see the objective markers through it. So we actually we actually dig it. We dig it a lot. Um, so we put all this together. We are going to be playing today Ultramarines versus Dark Eldar. Um, and we're going to be focusing a lot more on the terrain, how it plays, showing you what you can fit there, um, kind of the line of sights that we get into situations and stuff like that. And, um, and yeah, so uh, we'll, let's get right into it. We're going to give you a breakdown of each terrain piece, and then we'll go over the armies. All right, so let's start off with these terrain pieces. These are the large ruins. Um, they've got uh, this like fuel stack on the corner. There's two of these. Um, there's no windows or anything. They're all blocked out there and here. Um, once you are in it, it is true line of sight. So obviously if you're here and you're in the middle there, you are gonna be able to be shot if they're from the sides here. So you'll see there's an alleyway kind of down this way. Um, this is set up uh, for one of the table layouts and it's set up for priority target. We'll kind of show you that just so you have a sense of what I'm showing you. Um, there's ruins on the back there that are also kind of line of sight. So there's four of these. Um, the other two are a little bit different. Um, so that's one. And then the other one here, again, there is full blocking there. The floors are a little different here. I'll talk about the floor height really quick. So the floors on this one is three and a half inches. Um, so, you know, you got to pay four inches to go up there and these ones are five inches. Uh, so it's, it's kind of steep to go up there, but it's kind of cool the way they designed this where you can go here one turn if you want to, and then you could pay less movement here and move kind of all the way across. Um, so that's just something that's a little cheeky. Again, no windows, nothing like that. If you are in here, you're pretty, you're pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. You could hide a lot of stuff. We've done a lot of measurements. We'll show you what you can fit as we start to play. The way they play these bases while we are on this piece of terrain is that it is full obscuring all the way from these bases here. It's not from the walls or anything. So you've got full obscuring all the way from these acrylic bases all the way around. Obviously you will get light cover no matter where you are on it. And if you touch it, obviously you can see through it if you're tall enough. Uh, so that's those pieces of terrain. Then you've got some forests. Um, I still question this a little bit. Um, so my opinion is it's, it's kind of weird. I understand it, but it's kind of weird. So there's a forest basically on each one of these. I'll, I'll zoom out a little bit so you can see. So there's a forest like this on both sides and then across the middle right there, there's a forest on that side and a forest on that side. Seems like the intention here is if you're shooting down here, you're pretty much gonna be minus one 90% of the time. Um, so there's very, very little wiggle room. And it is possible that this is, we're not using this exact size. This might be like an inch too short. So it might actually fully block um, the six inches there. And then it's kind of the exact same thing here when you're on this backside, um, you know, you're shooting down this alleyway if you're, if you're doing it, depending on the deployment. I think that's the intention to make it where the alleyways, if you're in them and you're shooting, it's harder to hit, I guess. Um, I don't know how much it's gonna affect this game per se or anything, but I think that's the intention of why those are there and what they do. Um, and then you've got the other pieces of terrain, which are these two small ruins right in the middle. Uh, it's very interesting. So there's no windows on these. I don't know if they're gonna play with windows. It didn't look like in the pictures, so we blocked them all out. So you've got a couple little pockets that you can scoot up to. Um, in, in these and these base sizes, if you want to know like all the dimensions and stuff, you can look at our train video we posted the other day. Um, but these base sizes are about 10 by six inches and the larger ones um, are about 12 by 12. Um, one of our ends is 11 inches because of the size of acrylic they make in the store. So don't judge us. Um, one thing I will point out right here with these, you might not be able to tell 100%, but let's look at these acrylic bases right there. So you can see they're overlapping. If I draw a line through here, it hits the other one. And same thing coming from this way. If I draw a line right here, it hits this one. There is no shooting through this middle. 
unless you are in that terrain. So this might look like an open alley. It is not an open alley. That is fully obscured and blocked off. So yeah, lots of obscuring. I'm actually really excited. The table looks really cool. Um, so yeah, let's go over the armies. All right, so going over the Dark Eldar, we've got three patrols here. Uh, we've got a Cult of Strife uh, with my Warlord. Let's, uh, let's take a look at, at that. So um, if you don't know and you're not familiar, a lot of people play these rules a little different or they have been. And one thing that it, we just want to clarify too is Cult of Strife, if you, have to, if you want to take the Relic, has to be your Warlord. So Cult of Strife is my Warlord. We've got the Razor Flails, we've got Precision Blows, and we've got um, the Toxins. So I'm going to have 14 attacks, looking for sixes to hit to do two mortals. So that's going to be really, really good. Um, and then I've got my Triptych Witch in the other patrol with uh, the Cursed Blade. Um, so she's got the Triptych Whip and um, uh, Whirling Death. So I love that combo. It's really, really good for hordes and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, you're getting seven attacks plus guys within two inches. Um, favorite, like these are my two favorite combos right now. Um, they're amazing. I've got an Archon. He's just going to have my f uh, fight last. Um, I find that that comes in help in a lot of matches. And with a combat army like this, you need to multi-charge and guarantee you're not going to get interrupted somewhere. And I got a Homunculus. Uh, homunculus is pretty much just there to be a while we stand, we fight in certain matchups. I don't know if I'll be taking that today, but that's why he's there. He's also going to be buffing up 10 racks in his, and um, their obsession is going to be the minus one damage. I think it's a superior obsession and I really, really like it. So they're gonna start off with their five up invo and five up feeling low pain, minus one damage. And then I'm gonna have two other rack squads. It's this blue one here and this red one here um, that are just five mans. Um, and that's all we've got in there. Um, and then the Cult of Strife stuff, uh, we've got two five man Cult of Strifes and we've got a five man Helion Cult of Strife and a three uh, man Reaver Cult of Strife. Pretty much uh, just for shenanigans and denying Overwatch, especially against like Ultramarines, it's really important. And against a lot of other lists, like even if you go against Admech or anything, denying Overwatch is super important. So you've got Helions that are super fast. You've got Reavers that are super fast. So being able to say, hey, you're not shooting Overwatch, I can get in there, touch a couple things, and then come in with Witches afterwards is very, very uh, useful. Um, and then the Cursed Blade, I've got three eight mans. Um, so there's just three eight mans, no special weapons. You got to be up to 10 to get the special weapons. Um, but we're doing eight mans. The reason for that is so that they are under points for my while we stands. Um, so they're at 90 points instead of being at 95, 95, 100 or anything like that. And then we've got two more five man Hellions. Um, so we've got three of those total. And then we've got another three bikes as well. So we've got two squads of three bikes, three squads of five Hellions. And then our elite slots are going to be three squads of five Mandrakes. Those are kind of just spread out. Um, and then we've got four Raiders and the, I mean, that's, that's pretty much it. Um, it's a little bit different list. Um, I've been playing an all witch list and I really like it. You know, we did really good at the, uh, the GT team tournament with it. Um, so I've changed this up to be a little bit more friendly to this GW terrain. Um, I think that you can alter your list some. So this is what we're going to be rocking and, um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Let's go over to the Ultramarines. All right, guys, Thomas here with my Ultramarine list. Uh, if you've been watching Ultramarine's battle reports lately, this is probably one of the later versions. I have not changed it too terribly much. We're going to be interesting. It's very shooty. I don't know how it's going to do on this terrain where it's blocking, but I didn't want to make too many drastic changes before we played. So this list is two patrols and a Supreme Command. So obviously, Gilliman here is your Warlord. Patrol number one, we're going to have a Chaplain. Master of Sanctity, but this time I did not give him the Warlord trait, Wise Orator. I left him um, without the Warlord trait, and, but I did give him Benediction of Fury. So he's got the Super Chaplain Stick, two units of Vitrix, one Infiltrator Squad with the Helix, two Devastator Squads, one with all Grav and one with all Laz Cannons and Cherubs on those. And then I got two units of Suppressors. The other patrol, I got Tigarius. He's going to know Mighty Heroes, Veil Time. And Psychic Fortress. We're going to have Primaris Apothecary. He's going to be upgraded with the Warlord trait. Um, Selfless Healer. So he's going to be the fully buffed up um, Apothecary. He's going to have the Vox. So he's going to make his uh, Feel No Pain bubble six inches. Now we got a new tech here, Judiciar. I've tried many lists to make him work. I uh, played against a guy in a tournament who pulled out an old school Ultramarine Warlord trait I had never used before. It didn't even cross my mind, but uh, it was good tech. I'm stealing it. We're going to try it out. 
Uh, Ward number crag lets him heroic six, so that lets him actually have a chance to use his fight last ability. Gave him the seal of oath relic. Got a 10 man intercessor squad with the assault bolters, power fist, and a hellblaster squad, five man. With, of course, mastercrafted on the sergeant because it's just good. Uh, that's the list. We played it a lot. We're going to see if that chaplain can roll threes because he doesn't have the wise or rare toilet. He needs to not roll twos. Uh, we'll go see the setup and terrain, and we'll be back. All right, going over our secondaries and everything like that. Uh, so Thomas has picked priority target, which is the mission one, Oath of Moment, and Assassinate. And then myself, I've picked priority target as well, Engage, and the uh, the data. I don't even know what it's called. The new, the, the new Deploy Scramblers, that's what I call it. Retrieve Oculus Data. Um, so going over this, um, I have selected this one to be my priority target. And Thomas, which one have you selected over on your side? He can choose from this one. I choose that one. He chooses this as this one, number three. I moved that one all the way over there. So one's a little bit more risky for him. So this one's pretty good. Um, so going over our deployment really quick, let's start with me and then I'll hand this over to Thomas. There is, there is like literally, so I know we want to talk about the terrain. So um, he just can't see anything. There's literally nothing he can do about this right now. It's uh, it's pretty nuts. We we kind of showed you the line side blocking. So right here, I'm hidden. Like there's bases, overlapping bases, like here hits this corner there. So like he physically can't see me unless he is like here. So these guys like can't get shot. It's pretty nuts. Um, and it's kind of the same thing over here. There's like one one sliver that you can see down here. So as long as you avoid this one sliver, it goes through all three of these bases. And who knows, maybe it's supposed to be where there is none. The bases might be a little bigger, we don't know. But there's like one sliver right there right now. Um, this worked out really good with this deployment. I was able to fit Helions, Reavers, all up in here, all the way in my deployment. I'm safe, I can't get shot. Pretty sweet. Um, I've got my court. I forgot about them when I went over the list of overview. I was like, wait, we're missing some models here. So we've got a court here. Um, I designed this list to be able to do while we stand, we fight, but I'm not taking it. Uh, we've got a boat here with the succubus and witches in it. And then we've got basically rinse and repeat over here. Just a bunch of guys. Um, so yeah, we're just fully hitted. Um, I've got a lot of fast movement, a lot of combat. He has a lot of shooting, but he also has combat as well. Um, so Thomas, go over uh, your stuff on this side. Yeah, so very frustrating because you're always kind of like, I'm playing the angles. I want to shoot. I'm going to look for my opportunities to redeploy. And we're like, uh, point the laser. Like, I can't see over here. can't see over there. Like, bump that guy. Oh, nope. Now I can't see. Like, there's nothing to see. So first turn is going to be very interesting positioning wise. I don't even know what I'm going to do. It got to the point where he was just putting guys down and I wasn't even bothering looking at it. I'm just putting my guys down. Uh, completely irrelevant to where he is. So just looking at my deployment, why I did what I did. So we got my 10 men here centrally located so that they can run up into this objective in the center and potentially get line of sight once he comes out of the booth. But look, there's really ruins. So he could just hide in those ruins pretty easily. I did pull that objective forward. So if I wanted to run and potentially take that objective, I could if I had some offset guys. He did not pick that as his priority target smartly. So um, he's safe in the back. Uh, over here, I picked these guys, kind of my long-range shooting threats, last cannons, some suppressors, and some grav, just in case I needed to shoot down this alley, but there's no angles. Like, look at this little piece right here. That basically means I can't, I have to be like this, really tight to shoot down there. So it's kind of, it's kind of prohibitive. So unless he comes out of the booth, not much I can do, so... Question is, am I going to come out of the booth? And I think we're going to be fighting. So a lot of my guns are going to fall by the wayside until he comes across the line. So we're going to see. Got some Hellblasters. I got guys here to protect them with the Judiciar set up for if he charges me. But he's not coming to charge me the first turn. So we have picked our secondaries. We're going to roll for going first. And then we'll be back after the first turn movement. All right. End of turn one for the Ultramarines. Uh, we... We were going to show end of movement, but there's really nothing to shoot at. So that's pretty much the end of this turn. I did cast some psychic powers. So just kind of taking a look at what I did. These guys just shuffled up into the ruin. He now can see me if he potentially comes out of the booth. I don't think he will. Uh, I did stick one objective secured toe on there just in case he wants to send somebody to try to steal that objective. Right now I'm sitting on three objectives. So I will have 15 on the primary if he doesn't dislodge me. 
how does the terrain in the center affect what you what's going on? Right here in the center, it's a little bit tricky. Like you know, I pushed up because I want to get threat threaten him if he comes out. But if he can, if he just hides in the ruins, it's to my advantage because I got oath a moment. I got upsec on the center, so that intercessor squad is wholly within six. Uh, so is a couple other units, so I can get oath this turn if he doesn't kill them all. If he doesn't come out of the booth, I can just really push it on him. Um, if he does come into me, I got my castle. I'm fully buffed. I got my invulnerable save up. Um, you know, so that's that's not nothing. But uh, I don't know what he's going to do. So no shooting to speak of because I can't see. I'm just hanging out. So we'll come back at the end of turn one, or at least we'll see what Brad does during his movement phase. All right, so the end of my movement phase, you put me in a position where – I kind of have to just go and take him off this. I can't just give him 15 free primary because then it's going to be an uphill strug struggle even more the next turn because then his characters will be on this objective. So he'll basically get 30 free primary if I don't do this right now. Um, so I've got two of my Helions. This one has plus one attack, which is really good. And they're plus one tough, or no, I don't know. What, uh, yeah, plus one toughness. And then I got these Cold of Strife ones to deny him Overwatch. These guys are out of Overwatch range. They can't be seen by anybody. Um, so this little path here is kind of good for them. I put Mandrakes up here because I want to get um, a little bit extra shooting and maybe some more close combat attacks. He'll probably shoot at them in Overwatch, but um, it's okay. I have the models. Um, I kind of just shifted up here. Um, we're just sitting on the objective. I poked my nose out here. He's going to be able to shoot me a lot. Probably would be smarter to just not shoot a Dark Lance because we already know it's not going to do anything. Um, but that's okay. We'll he can, he can shoot at it. Um, and I just moved up everything here. We're just in this pocket with witches, Helions, Reavers. These ruins protect me with everything. Um, and I'm just going to guarantee my engage points here with these bikes. And we're just going to shoot a couple more shots um, at the suppressors maybe. So um, if we get lucky, maybe we'll kill suppressor. He'll just grow back. So it doesn't really even matter. I don't know what I'm doing and why I'm poking out to kill a suppressor for no reason. Um, so yeah, let's see how the shooting goes. All right, so he made me make a very terrible decision. So I killed too many guys in the shooting. Um, I just shot with all these guys' weapons. What I killed? Two guys, three Two guys? guys. But the main point was he left a hole here for my yep, so. judiciary. To, uh, to so I was like, last. I was like, okay, he's not going to be able to come through here with a six-inch heroic, make me fight last because there was guys there. He pulled those guys, which then gives him the ability to heroic, and I can't have him make these guys fight last because they have plus one attack. They're rerolling all their hits. Super important. Um, so you can't do it on them. Uh, so these guys are just going to get squashed and there's nothing I can do about it. And we're just going to hope that these guys kill the, the obsec. Um, he's going to transhuman them, make a minus one to hit. Um, so yeah, we'll see, uh, we'll see what we can do with that. Um, he did overwatch. He killed four mandrakes. Um, that was unfortunate. I need a couple more. I kind of had that extra unit. I figured I would just throw them in here, see if I get some more swings, but yeah, a little bit of misplay, but let's see what we do in the punching phase. All right, well, plans failed. Um, got a lot of swings on me. I just failed every single save with his power fist, and he just took out all my Hellions. Gilliman mulched up this squad over here. I knew that was going to happen, but I had to try it. Um, sitting behind a wall for a turn just wasn't going to give me anything. Um, and, I mean, I killed enough intercessors to where now you can just bring one back, but neuter them down a little bit and then next turn we'll see if i can uh hit them more so yeah on to thomas let's see uh what the score is um thomas what you got for me so you picked up your party target <sighs> you got two unengaged because of the bikes yep two unengaged killed all the other guys that were trying to get engaged uh, I, I did not assassinate anyway and then at the end of the turn i'm in the center mm -hmm. and i did not film around on all those cylinder sisters you killed so i'm going to pick up three points for oaths all right so three for oath we both got priority i got two for engage and i did my first you did your first retrieve data yep. now it's turn two and i'm going to pick up 15 15 yep i tried to stop it nothing i could do Ooh. oh well all right we have uh, some interesting tricky things going on here I did elected to not fall back, so don't give that oath a moment point. I really want to come out and shoot, but uh, I did get plus one to wound from my chaplain. But I'm going to just try to smite that guy and shoot. If not, I'm just going to kill him in combat. I'll have to fight first with a spell, so I can't smite him. Hmm. 
It's a good thing to realize. Over here, we backed up just to stay out of threat range of the witches. Also got infiltrators trying to block. He's got some racks that can deep strike. I just need to make sure I bubble out. These guys drop back to deny him dropping back here. This objective is a little exposed if he makes a charge into the point because that's the primary priority target and he'd be OPSEC, he would take it from me. But that just leaves him really a few spots where he could potentially get overwatch. So I don't know. He, if he makes a nine, he just makes it. So there's nothing to do about that. Um, and really, I'm just setting up for next turn when he uh, is going to be forced to commit his whole force to me. Can I withstand the onslaught? So that's the choices. Let's go to the psychic phase, and we'll be back after shooting is done. All right, Ultramy fans, turn two is complete. Uh, shooting went better than expected. I had plenty of guns, so it wasn't a question of how... If it would die, just how many guns would it take? And I killed him on the very first volley. I did smite this guy instead of casting Veil of Time. We'll see if that makes a difference. He does have a fight last guy, so it probably doesn't matter. Um, but that's it. We shot. We killed the... We, <laughs> that's it. That's yeah, what it. Else happened? That's it. We, we killed the bikes over here. Else. Grab guys casually picked up the bikes. The suppressors took down that raider. He fell out behind this wall with his Super Succubus and his Archon. And eight girls. I think he lost one or two girls in the in the wreckage. They did it's not explode. Spots, so six, left. six witches left, and there's nobody left to shoot. As much as those intercessors want to shoot somebody, can't shoot. They did get plus one to wound, so um, Overwatch could be strong if if they get lucky enough to do it. All right, Mister Aggressive has taken his stance. Um, lots going on here. So I auto advance this raider. If Yoloed over here. Um, I'm basically going to use it to charge and soak up some overwatch um, on these grav guys if he wants to shoot it. Probably a waste of CP for him. So I'm going to charge there. These guys are all going to come in. My plan is my Archon is going to go into the Vitrix here, make them fight last. Um, and then hopefully as Judiciary, the only person he can make fight last is the Archon. Um, and he can't go towards the Witches because I'm going to try to like wrap further this way. Um, the Archon really doesn't, is just going to prevent them from heroking. We'll see how this goes. He might get something over here. Um, but I think between the witches and these guys, I pick up the grab guys at least. Um, this is just going to come in. We'll see how much movement we can get. We can deny some overwatch um, over here as well. Um, and then I might not have to spend CP on the Succubus for charging in. And we're just charging everything. Helions are over here. They are going to try to charge these guys so that... Um, he can't shoot Overwatch with them uh, when I charge the grab guys because he could shoot right here. Honestly, it's it, it would be really cool if I could fall out and then charge you. Right? That'd be sweet. And then be like, oh, I don't want to shoot him. But you can't do that. Remember, you can't do that. Um, then I got racks over here. We're going to try to take him off his objectives. Like, I need a nine-inch charge there. I need a good charge here. And then I got Mandrakes doing my um, data in that deployment zone. So I get the second one of that. My raider came down over here, which has guys in it. So this should just let me hold this objective pretty free and take guys out and then move up next turn. And then I've got bikes and mandrakes and a character over here on this one. I don't think he can really contest this one this next turn either. Um, so I should be able to get, um, yeah, some good movement. But who knows? This turn might just flop. The terrain, let's talk about the terrain because we're trying to do that. Um, I mean, where do I where do I start? So... The train's interesting because you can move up and you can block a lot of stuff, um, but it's creating this center of the board chaos because there's no, nothing to really move around the outside here freely. Like everything's in the middle. So you got to move to the middle to be, uh, you know, obscured more, or you just got to like sit out in the open anywhere over here. So everything is kind of funneling to the middle and we're fighting over the middle, um, which is, it's interesting. There's not a, a lot of outside play you can do unless you're really fast. Even with my fast units, like this was an outside play going from one room to another. So like, that's pretty good. Um, you know, I got a lot of good movement here. So, but if you're slower, you're going to be in the open a lot. Um, and in the open, unless you're going in the middle and you're using these two buildings in the middle to really help you. Um, so yeah, it's interesting. You definitely need stuff to fight in the middle and hold the middle, it seems like so far. That's the gist I'm getting. Let's go into uh, my turn. All right, so I uh, had to reroll on the Hellions over here uh, to make sure you couldn't shoot me with the Hellblasters, which is a good thing because I probably would have lost a lot of models. 
the funny thing is, is all these charges, so I made all the charges but the racks, okay? I rolled a 10, I rolled a nine, I rolled an eight, I rolled a 10. Yeah, I rolled an eight on the racks and I couldn't CP it because I CP'd the Hellions because um, it was more important to get them in here. Um, but everything made it. Um, I made these Vitrix fight last. I was able to get these guys closer so he couldn't like heroic backwards towards me and he would have to go th this way. Um, so it kind of worked out. Um, so he's making these witches fight last here. Uh, we'll see how important that is. So you can still do an interrupt. So I got to still pick where I'm going to fight um, first uh, and everything that obviously the succubus. So we're going to swing with her. We'll see what happens. All right. So the end of the charge phase, witches did witches things and died. Um, I just failed all my saves, but I mean, like I said, they just go, they go in, they die. It is what it is. Um, I was hoping I was going to kill at least one Vitrix or two, but I mean, I just, I flubbed stuff. He made all of his saves. I had to make a decision with the succubus over here. I tried to just take his obsec off. Um, and I should have just gone to the Vitrix. I would have killed all the Vitrix with the mortals probably. It would have been close. Um, so I only hit six mortals. Um, not, not the best. Uh, I was debating, you know, putting more witches and more succubus here. I thought I was going to do more damage, but um, I weakened him a little bit. He killed a lot of my stuff. I killed his grav. These guys are kind of beasts on um, the court. This is, they're just kind of good. Um, not much happened over here. We just kind of slapped each other. I lost a Helion. Um, but my, you know, I got a bunch of movement with my Raiders. Uh, we're there to threaten stuff. Um, so Thomas, what did we get on the score? We got, so I got 10 on the primary there. Um, I'm going to pick up my three for priority, three for engage. I did my second data. He's going to get four for oath because he was able to kill a vehicle. He got his priority and nothing on assassinate yet. Um, so he's got two characters in his midst. midst. So, uh, you know, he he's probably going to pick some stuff up there. And he's going to get 15 again on the primary. Uh, I just cannot take him off of this middle one. Um, and my stuff just isn't in place to get across the board yet to take these back objectives. So, um, yeah, he's just racking the primary up. Um, so, yeah, I'm just going to assume he's going to max it out. See how he keeps going. Top of turn three, Ultramarines. <laughs> um, I've had some a lot of choices here, a lot of targets, a lot of things I gotta shoot. Um, the terrain is causing quite a bit of uh, difficulties. Take for example these last cannon devs. They're coming out of the booth. They're like, "Hey, I can see that raider pretty clearly," and then you're like, "Wait a minute, that little clear piece of thing says no. Only one last cannon can see by the skinniest of margins." Over here. We're just trying to manage all the pieces. So Hellblasters are backing out. We're going to heal an Apothecary here in a second. Uh, we healed this guy. Vitrix Gar is getting healed. Um, and then all the guys have moved up to shoot. So it's going to be shooting. I'm going to try to pick up these Raiders. Interesting here. If you look at the terrain, depending on when or who kills this, he could emergency disembark. He could fall out here. He could fall out and make it where I can't get easy shots on the contents. So that's problematic. So I have to really think hard about how that combat's going to go. Do I have enough guns? This is my priority target objective. So I have to make sure that these Hellions die. And uh, I have to worry about these witches falling out. They could potentially fall nearby. So I can't let them obsec that objective. There's no troops over there. My only troops here are these two guys left. He's got a whole boatload of witches, so if I somehow kill both of these witches, rides and the guys inside, he still has racks and witches there, and he's got racks right here I have to deal with. This is the target I marked for Seal of Oath that I hate. So we've got lots of, lots of options that I just don't know what I'm going to do with. But that's it. Let's go on to the psychic phase. I still haven't made up my mind what I'm going to try to do. All right. End of the turn for Ultramarines. Turn three. A lot of shooting. You'll see I destroyed this raider. I hadn't even thought about him falling out on this side of the wall. He did her, her emergency disembark, so he lost four witches falling out. I didn't really position guys to shoot very many things at him, so I was able to plink off a few more uh, racks. So he's got a few racks. His witch that was in there died to morale, but he's still got a succubus back there. Not good. He popped lightning fast reflexes on the court. I shot a bunch of last cannons over here with no rerolls. And with City, I shot some suppressors and they just made a bunch of fives. Over here, this raider died and all the occupants died. Over here, 
I shot some of the racks that I hate. I didn't have very many guns left after it was all said and done. Then Tigeris, actually Gilman tried to charge into this character here. He shot the Succubus once those witches got shot up, so she didn't even have to get charged. But I tried to charge Gilman in here. Couldn't really fit with his big base. I didn't move those guys out of the way. Did not fall back. So unfortunately, he couldn't make it. So Tigeri said, I'll take care of this. And I totally forgot he could fight. Make me fight last. So he hit me, did three wounds. I failed all my saves. So I took a bunch of wounds. Now I'm hurt. I fought him back. He made all his two ups until the very last one. So the shadow field is down. He suffered three wounds from Tigeris' stick. So he's got two wounds left as well. So it's a fight off. But there's a bunch of snakes. There's a raider. There's not much left here. There's a character plus. Oh, there are bikes. Look at that. Hiding back here, some bikes. And then, yeah, there's all this. So um, he doesn't have much left, but he still can do quite a bit of damage. We're going to see what he does in his turn. All right, so we kind of calculated the points because this is a grim, dark future right here, and I don't think there's anything I can do to actually win this. Um, Thomas pushing up into this middle is just like I needed something to go my way one of those turns. I tried it, and it didn't. So I'm just going to show you how to play from behind and get as many points as you can. We're going to come back here with these guys. We're going to shoot. We're going to charge. We're going to kill these suppressors. We're gonna deny Overwatch with these guys. Succubus is gonna come through the wall, kill the suppressors and the Hellblasters. Archon is probably gonna die. These guys are doing my data here, so they're not gonna do anything. These guys are gonna charge here, take his obsec off, hopefully take this objective from him. Not that it really matters. Um, we're just gonna shoot this guy down with the las cannons. Um, I know it's gonna die from the las cannons if I can't touch him with the snakes and stuff like that. Um, but it's okay. That's what we're gonna do. My Mandrakes went up. This guy's just holding this by himself, being a G on this back. Um, so yeah. All right, so we said what we were gonna do. Succubus came in here, mulched. Uh, he transhumaned on these guys, which has kept them alive, but killed three Hellblasters. Killed the suppressors over here. Uh, came over here, just killed two guys. He swung back. I actually fired Overwatch, killed Ergold, did a couple wounds to a snake. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna trap him there uh which is fine archon died like a chump and we'll go on to thomas and rock and roll it all right so the score after that turn number three um i did get 10 on the primary thomas is going to get th uh three on his priority three on oath six on assassinate um he's got the characters and now he's going to go for his third one i got five on pr priority it really doesn't matter like we're, we're both going to max that out i'm pretty sure um and then i got three more on engage and i got up to eight on my data um, so, I mean, I'm scoring everything, but he's going to pull away by a few points on each secondary and on the primary. Um, so yeah, let's go on to four. All right. End of turn four movement for the ultramarines, uh, litanies. We got the plus the reroll to hit with the chaplain. We got plus one to hit with the hell blasters. We had two guys there, one, two, and then we grew a guy back. Apothecary is doing work. He healed Tigerius, who was... At two wounds, now he's back to five, and he also healed the Vitrix that were hurt. Tigeris tried to run so that I could smite this succubus that is behind the wall, but he uh, didn't quite get far enough, so he's just going to hang back on the objective. We did bring over the Judiciar, who's been doing a lot of work. I like this little trick that I got. And I'm going to bring some Vitrix guard to help. And then we also moved all the last cannons back. They got one job. Make sure she doesn't do anything. So get rid of that character. I can't stop any of these points. That raider is kind of not important right now. I do need to hold this objective in the center. He's got some OPSEC, but I got a lot of like characters there that keep him alive. So hopefully that's enough. Uh, and I do need to take my priority target back. So that matters right now. So I got to make sure I get this. So that'll be a job. We're going to psychics and then we'll shoot. And we'll come back. All right. Almost all went to plan except for this pesky rack here. He survived some storm bolter shooting and charging. There was two racks there, only one died. That lets him hold OPSEC. He was able to kill down my OPSEC. I survived against all odds, really rolling great to have one guy that's OPSEC, but he ends up still having more models on the objective. So he's gonna take that from me, which will give him big points on the primary. Over here, I was able to exterminate those guys. And the succubus, the judiciar did her in. 
and then we cleared out everybody else here, the bikes and everything else. So now it's on to his turn. He's picking up primary. He's dropping guys out to do his last scramblers, and he's got some mandrakes coming down. So we'll see what he does on his bottom of turn four. All right, so turboed over here with my Raider, charged him in. We picked up this guy. Uh, we picked up a couple of dev guys. We're just going to chill over here to get our engage. And then if the Raider's alive and I need to go into this corner over here, I can. Um, I don't think he's really going to be able to shoot it. He's got to kind of make some decisions and run back here if it even matters to him. I'm just scooping points up. I can't win. The game is his. Um, so, yeah, that's that's where we're at. I did my last data. I just have guys sitting over here that are on the objectives. And we're just chilling. And the score. So I got 15 on primary, which was kind of unexpected there. That was kind of lucky that that happened. Um, so I'm at 35 now, so I just need to get 10 on my next turn, which I should be able to do. I don't have to go for 15. Um, so I think I'm going to actually max my primary out. He got four more on oath. He got three more on assassinate. He got three more on priority. I got three on priority, three on engage, and I maxed out my, my data. So, so far, so good. All right, we're here top of turn five. It's been a turn of events here. We've kind of done some calculations and we realized like, holy cow, Brad's going to win this. Now I have to scrap to try to stop him. His secondary is going to be more since I can't get at his character. His last deploy scrum is going to put him 12 to my nine on assassinate. And he picking up 15 on that primary is going to make us tied on the top. So that's almost the difference in the game. Now I have to try to stop him getting engaged and or the primary. So I'm trying to do both. I don't think I can't stop 10 points. I have to stop engage, right? So the only chances I have for engage is this objective here. So I'm positioned as many guys as I can. I've grown a guy back. Um, do I wanna, I'm gonna grow this guy back this way. Get more shots on target there. I've got Hell Blasters. I was debating that I need to kill that Raider there. Last can's have whiffed all game. They're due. One last can left. And he's got a sergeant there. It's gonna he's gonna take the power. Reroll. And then we got Chaplain says, I gotta do all the work myself. We do have one sergeant to help out. So that's the game. If I kill this unit, if I kill that unit, he can't engage. If I tie up that stuff enough. He won't have a third unit to run across the line with any crazy shenanigans. So there's not a lot of stuff here. Depending on if I can get this raider, it's going to be the moment of truth. Um, and, of course, mandrakes. I just wait till they hit five fives and don't die. It's going to be terrible. All right, we'll be back after the, the magic happens. All right, Ultra Marine fans, a lot of shenanigans has happened. Most of it went my way. End of the turn, I was able to advance these guys, grow a guy out two inches here. And uh, shoot down here. He made so many feel no pain saves. It was like take six wounds. He's like I passed four, and then I passed both feel no pain. So I was like, oh no, uh, that was from Gilliman. And then I shot and killed a couple guys with the bolters, um, but it made my charge longer. I made the charge. The vicious guard went to town, did all the work, killed him. So great charging there. These guys shot over charge. One guy died. Was enough to kill the raider. Four guys fell out. One guy's grenade launcher shot, did four wounds, killed three snake or three witches. And then I was able to charge with those Vitrix and kill them and consolidate into the snakes. Judiciar came in, made the snakes fight last, fought and killed a snake and a half. They fought back. Judiciar barely lived with one wound, um, but it did stop him from scoring that objective for now. He's got it on the bottom of his turn, so he's going to try to kill some guys, see if I can survive over here. And then over here, I needed to make sure those mandrakes died. I didn't have very many guns left to get on them, but I was just able to kill him with the chaplain, so that will stop him from getting engaged. So really all he's trying to do is get some points on the primary. Um, it doesn't really matter at this point. Stopped engaged. So this is academic, but we'll see if he can get it. We'll be back at the end of the game to give the final recap. All right, the dust has settled. End of the game. He uh, fell back and then recharged in, trying to ignore... The Vitrix, Judiciar, with his one moon left, said fight last. He fought. He made three out of his four feel no pains out of my six damage, but he was able to lose one snake. That cost him the the bodies that he needed. He fought back. He split his attacks on some Devastators and the Judiciar. The Judiciar made both of his saves. The Devastators didn't. 
So that left him with two models to my three. We've already taken them off the board, but one that, wound. It would have been a one point game instead of a six point game. Yeah. So I <laughs> I denied him getting the last turn of uh, one more objective. So looking at the final score, that cost him to only get five on the primary. If he had taken that from me, he would have gotten ten there to give him max on primary. So he scored forty. Looking at the final, he got full priority target. I never got to this back objective here with his one character that I needed. Um, he picked up 11 on engage. The gamble paid off. I, I didn't expect to have to do all that much work on the last turn. Turned out it mattered. Had to stop two quarters worth of guys. Quite a lot. Yeah, so you had an eight-point swing right there on the last turn because you the five there Yeah. and the three there, basically. Yeah, he got his full That's retrieve good. data. My side, I picked up nine for the three characters I killed. Got the full oath. Got the full priority. Final score, 84 to 78. With the paint. Full with, score. With the paint. Big <laughs> scoring. That is it. So that is it. Uh, hopefully you guys liked the terrain and stuff like that. Um, and we can show you kind of how these type of armies play from the battle reports you're used to seeing with us. Um, there was uh, Thomas's army in the middle there. It was, uh, it's a real brain buster for me. I thought I was out of it a lot sooner. Clearly, I wasn't out of it until the very last guy on the last turn. He made a Hail Mary play. It paid off. I made as many saves as I could to stay in it. Um, so six-point game. One guy stand, one wound would have been a one-point game. That's pretty good. I, d I needed one of the turns to turn in my favor when we were fighting in the middle. Um, so yeah, let us know in the comments what you like, dislike about this terrain, and we'll try to do uh, some other armies on here so you guys can see how they play. Like, comment, subscribe, do all those fun things. We'll see you next time.